stock. <laughs> I don't know how to tie a bow in you freaking Cub Scout. Oh, guys, this is going to be part three on the Caddy Swamp Ass airboat, uh, which you guys voted for that over Caddy Swamp Us. And in this one, we're going to wrap up everything, get it all back together, and then finally do a water test where I feel like this old Caddy 500 is going to inevitably blow up. This will be kind of a mashup of all the remaining repairs, mods, and things that need to be addressed. You can see to begin with, we kind of built the ship in the basement again, not going to be able to pull this out, which I knew that was going to happen. I've already been meaning to cut this uh, back since this bottom's not even supported. It's kind of dangling there. I've also decided I'm going to finally throw some stone down in here because when the wind kicks, it just blows dust everywhere. And if your feet are wet or dewy, you can step in this and then the boat is dirt everywhere. So. That's a little bit better. Can always pretty it up with some trim if I want. And now uh, full, taking full advantage of those scissor trusses. It's so cute that she's getting along with the new chicks. She's gotta be about four, I don't know, five years old now. She's not a layer anymore, but what a great grandmother to these little chicks. She's so well-mannered, teaching the little chicks the ways. Like stay out of the open yard because there are hawks around here. That all covered up, ready to dump some stuff. tight on the back one. I dropped the stone down a scotch. Darn. Had some heavy corrosion on it, but we'll call that ready for paint. Here's the original numbers from Florida, FL6755EJ. We got Alex, we're gonna put some, some final touches. Here you go, buddy. Throw your, uh, oh, look at you. your sense and exert on. Oh. oh, look at that. See how that looks on you? And so <clears throat> Darren down at Sensenick in Florida sent us a awesome prop for this. He gave us a killer deal and they were just a joy to work with as far as matching up what will work for the Caddy 500. Wait till you see this thing actually out in the sun and mounted on the Caddy Swamp Ass. It's gonna be beautiful. This came with all the grade eight bolts and a premium mounting flange. Look at the craftsmanship on this. I don't know if that's just out of billet, CNC cut, but Oh yeah. On the supports for the veins, we showed you the bottoms are rotted out. There's actually bronze bushings inside of here. So we're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and just cut some two inch sections and then MIG this in. See the bolt cutters work for this. Oh yeah, it's no problem. <laughs> The 
volatile paint can lid over there. Got a spark, huh? How's it going over here, mister? You know, just hacking stuff up. Don't mind me. <laughs> yeah, got those boxed in. Good enough. Now I'll clean the rust and paint them. Where'd Gus go? What you doing, buddy? You ready to come on the airboat? He's gonna get sucked into the fan. Ah. Yeah, we'll have to hold him tight. I don't paint. Paintings for peasants. Paint paintings for peasants. Yes. Eh? Come on now. I don't think too many people would take kindly to that. Well, the world needs painters and ditch diggers, right? The world needs painters and ditch diggers. I'm neither. You heard it from Down Sater himself. Oh no, that wasn't for me. I didn't say that. Is that gonna be your your T-shirt for your channel? Yeah, that's my, that's my merch. <laughs> Look at that, man. That's pro. That's freaking factory finish right yeah, there. Yeah, there's not even any lines there. Yeah, at least. see that one's gone right there. Look at that. Your stainless steel filler neck from a Ford Ranger. Got it on eBay for like 20 bucks. After cleaned up. Just the grounds on. As soon as I put this on the start. Oh. <laughs> uh, who needs an arm? How's she doing? Well, she sat flush. It's tight fit though. Where is this coming from? This wire is a mystery to me right now. Look at Alex is doing the honors, filling her up. Oh yeah, let's see if she leaks. You know, before we put the rest of the prop on, I'm gonna fill this pig up, start it, go with a little uh, two-stroke insurance here. Gooped enough to one. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> well, we had no power going to the HEI coil unless you pull this lanyard out. So this must be designed to be used with like maybe grounding out a coil or something, but he had this tied in with the 12 volts coming and then going to the ignition. coil ignition. Yeah. yeah, so now it should start with that out and we'll have to get a different switch. Right, round two. Whoa! There it is. He's firing off there. Let me hop up there. Will it idle is the question. Oh, it will. Let's see some tweaking. <laughs> oh, my neighbors love me. This thing just like magnifies the sound. It's <laughs> so loud.
You gonna be doing some recovery like heavy D sparks or what? Oh. <laughs> Pulling out some house notes. Beautiful. A little crooked, but perfect. It's not crooked. It's not. It's a little crooked. Go. Oh. Where will change owner? Yeah, so we kind of left that sludgy, milky stuff in there. Ah, oh, it's looking good. That's like taco night right there. <laughs> Morning after. Taco. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we gotta adjust this thing. Oh, I see. So the adjustment is this crack right here, right? Yes. Yep. Should be. I knew it's in there. Clear prop. Clear. Right there, never run your propeller with somebody standing in the plane of the propeller. I mean, that's just common sense, really, but. So much airflow across that radiator, too. Holy smokes. Somebody, uh, that's, yeah, that's a major drag on this. And if we want to get some extra speed, we can always relocate that somewhere else that you really don't need that much airflow, is the thing. See hit it again. Oh, I see it's hitting. Uh, we got to space it off a little bit on the bottom. Hmm. Or just snip that away. Yeah, the other side doesn't even have a bolt there, actually. Let's just get rid of this center bolt. Did the, uh, did the factory send you these pieces to put on here? Or is this OEM? <laughs> what do we got here, bro? <laughs> All right. That'll keep us alive. Well, this is water test day. We spent half the day doing just a few odds and ends, nuts and bolts that were missing, rechecking everything. And uh, I got the, the battery switch into place, added some fuses, had to add a diode on the alternator. And we got these extra support angle iron just because uh, not sure how much forward thrust is going to have and it seems a little skimpy so we added those just to be safe alex is adding some seating safe it's fine uh and yeah it should should be good good time i think we maybe get some more gas too before we hit the water those are those zip ties i saved from the electric bicycle too Cadillac every time you get something in the mail it has zip ties all over it you cut them in the right place and you can reuse them these are nice heavy duty ones Feel safe. That's 15 gallons total there. That's just under 30 gallon tank. It's floating, so that's a good start. Take her away. So you're gonna be the chase vessel? Or? Yeah, I'll save you. <laughs> a little bit of a leak coming in. Well, we'll address that at a later time. No bilge pump yet. I'm going to the channel.
So one of the biggest hazards with these boats, if you come off plane too quick and there's a big wall of water coming up on you and it dunks in the back, it can sink this boat super quick. And we're in like, there's a 50 foot channel here. We're actually sticking to the side on purpose because uh, uh, yeah, like it's uh, dipping uh, close uh, to the side. Uh, <laughs> so these these are not really meant for this like but we're just we're just doing a test run out here <laughs> the We're old back in the caddy. shallow waters now. We got some swamps we can go check out. We got Jen on the jet ski, so. What's that? You good? Yeah, we're good. Did Have... happen? No, nothing Are happened. Is it sinking yet? No, not even taking on water, unbelievably. If she makes <laughs> it's it, it's crooked. <laughs> it's perfect. That's it's, perfect. It's OEM. All right, right. Alex's final christening addition to the boat. Let's get Don't it. rip it off. I'm making sure it's on there. <laughs> the center there and we are floating into the weeds which normally would be a worry with a, even a jet boat or any boat at least a foot here yeah but we don't have to worry those leaves yeah huh? yeah yeah i can't believe he survived here he's gonna be your buddy oh great there you go oh, dude's no. huge pick him up no <laughs> hey into the water really he's gonna drown now go he's, get oh, him go he's get him go, down he's in the water. go get him oh yeah i'll get him wow. <gasps> something's eating him yeah he's gonna be fish food in a second what oh wow yeah uh -oh. i'm gonna go if he falls in naturally, that's one thing, but he's not gonna be murder on my watch. Unless I'll meet him. He's probably gonna bite me if I don't pick him up with your hand. He's fine. He 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 won't bite me. Yes, he will. No, he won't. Oh my god. Oh, he looks pissed actually. Alright, here we go. I don't think you got him any. No, he did. He actually never did get flung off. He was on my flip-flop. <sighs> really hangs on. I mean, look at that. Neat. Cool. Get that. <laughs> yeah. Cheers to a successful maiden voyage on the Caddy Swamp Ass. Cheers. We're doing it for the farmers, just so you know. We are farmers. Bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 bum. <laughs> no, not the insurance company. <laughs> the, the corn folk. Clear prop. So I'll get <laughs>
we stalled out in the muck here. Uh, I think the boat will stall, start back up, but uh, well, we're gonna start by, th this guy held on for the whole ride, so we're gonna let the, the beetle off back onto his plants. Oh, he came back in the boat. <laughs> now he's probably pissed. I'm sorry, buddy, you're tough. Oh. All right, now here he goes. Right. We got the, the beetle out of our life. Now we have to somehow get this boat out of the muck, which it's, it's just really stuck. So here's what we're gonna do, baby. Alright, we're starting back up. We're gonna really have Jen do the Alright, we're I think we're stuck. <laughs> Little stuck in the mud. This is the the butterfly quilt. <laughs> this is the mongoose ball. <laughs> That was a good throw, babe. Hey, some of these might have to go in the mud. Why don't I? Why don't I at least bring the? Jet Let me get a warmer go. Why don't I bring the jet ski over to there? It, it, let's just see how far I can throw it first. Hold on. Dude, you're not getting that over there. That's pretty decent. Uh, it's not good enough. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So go ahead and tie your, your bowline or whatever you're I don't know how to tie a bowline, you freaking Cub Scout weirdo. <laughs> whatever you're comfortable with. I don't know how to tie a knot, period. Dude, I'm not in the mud at all. There's like two feet of water right here. It's just From weird. here, it looks like it's <laughs> sitting on the mud. I'm fine. I'm just going to tie it right to here, bro. Yeah. Tell you what we're going to do. We're going to do a bowline, which doesn't hold that well on this kind of rope, but Seems to be all right. We'll do another bowling. Yeah, we could have done a water knot or something or another, but. This is the old moose knuckle. Learned this one in Maine. <laughs> is he giving you a knot class over there? Oh, you got two bowlings. All right. Hold on, hold on. Now, hold on. Just so this, this, mega, this mega hook on the front that Alex called me a weirdo, for putting on, he's like, "Well, you need that now. We need this because." Okay, great, wonderful. No, I'm not ready. All right, ready? Yeah. It's steaming over. All right. So we wait for the tide. That's in like three hours, four hours. Well, how much beer we got? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to brainstorm here, but geez, look at this sky behind us. That's beautiful. I mean, this is the adventure, right? This is this Chris is what got it's all us about. stuck again. Oh yeah, we're gonna be fine. All right, so uh, here's what we gotta do. Beautiful. All right, your throttle is right here. Don't worry, you're not gonna run me over. Trust me, if we get it moving, so don't worry about that. That going forward. Yeah, you're gonna hold it right about there. If we get moving, keep us moving. Alex is now gonna mud bog over and, uh, well, Jen. <laughs> yeah, he already put me in the mud. No, Shin's fine, but yeah, if, it's, I'm if I'm going over yeah, my nutsack, I'm not happy. Now. <laughs> oh, for the sake. <laughs> I don't even want to hear it. <laughs>
have to say. Oh, that was horrible. <laughs> Let's look at everyone's legs. And oh feet. my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> we did it though. It wasn't bad. All right, it's gone. It's out. Oh my god, that's so cool. Dude, there's huge catfish here. In the shallows, man. That's so this cool. is what those bow fish are throwing him at. Yeah, you're right. I just can't see the ski at all. Is that good back there, Alex? It's fine, dude. Uh, we're just gonna idle back now. We got the ski in tow behind us. Should be good. What a farmer, man! What? <laughs> I think we fixed the jet ski. Overheating issue. Oh my god! Dude, there's a catfish in here! Oh my Is he dead? He's dead, yeah. He's what did you be. do to him? Dude, I was doing Dude, what you I sucked told. up a mop and you killed a catfish. Oh. He's alive. Bring him in. Look, he's alive. Is he? You think so? Let's catfish bring him live forever. They're like cockroaches. How about now? He's hurt. He's pushed. Yeah, Alex murdered him. Yeah, he's dead as fuck. Maybe you just sucked up a dead catfish. Yeah, it probably did. I'll no. try. Okay. Right. Bye -bye. Yep, he's swimming. He's swimming. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, simply put, we had a ton of fun on this airboat. Couple things to address now. When it was idling, the low oil pressure light was flashing red. I still had a little budge on the needle. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire this up, check the oil pressure now. Uh, this gauge does go from zero to 145 PSI, so that's probably a little bit, oh, oh boy, that's a fall over here. Uh, that's, that's more than you really need on something like this. Really should have maybe a zero to 60 PSI gauge on there, but let's fire up the mechanical gauge and see what we got. I replaced the elbow with a T so we can have both gauges on. We're off at 45 PSI, cold idle. Now, can't argue with that, that's very healthy. And our gauge is showing actually around the same, just below the 58 PSI mark. Now that climbed from 40 to 50. I don't want to risk revving it up too high here in the car pool. You know, something viable to get pulled in. We're gonna do another oil change and fresh filter. So I was worried with all that crud and rust in the engine, it could have plugged up the other filter. Uh, but you know, before we do that, do a little sea foam and run it up to temperature, and uh, that way help clean out those lifters and such. I added just less than a half bottle, it's about six six ounces in there. Forget if I showed it or not, but we did hook the PCV up to this before riding it too. That way, the intake vacuum sucks in all those crankcase vapors with the all the humidity you know with the with the water in there if you don't do that you'll see steam coming out the whole time now let that run for a little while up in 20 minutes got her fully warmed up i did dial down the idle to around 800 rpm where it should be see our coolants keep it nice and cool around maybe 160 170 and with the oil pressure lights on and idle yeah i'm showing 18 psi at idle i topped up to 30 when i bring the the RPM up, so it's totally fine. While it's hot, uh, I've always been told generally uh, 10 PSI for every thousand RPM and you're good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and spill this oil now, see what that looks like. Even though we put the battery disconnect and I can shut that off, I think it goes without saying. It's a great idea to disconnect your battery if you're working on the engine or in the prop area on this. Speaking of the prop, check out the tips on these. It looks all like scratched up and everything from those plants we went through, but it's, it's really just superficial. With my fingernail, that comes right off. However, I'm sure uh, you're gonna lower the lifespan going and doing stuff like that all the time. Uh, we also have to retorque this after I think it was after five hours. And furthermore, I hope it didn't offend anybody going through the aquatic plants. I mean, those things grow back within weeks. This this boat does not affect their root system, unlike say one of those uh, those all-terrain surface drives. Those things will chew right through the whole root system. Yeah. Nope, not that milky. Still a touch though. Well, it's nice to do the third oil change. Maybe it was the fourth, I don't even remember. But I definitely want to get that sea foam out of there. I wouldn't run anything under serious load with that in there. It's not, not good. I hate how this oil pan's got like a belly in it and the drain plugs on the side. It makes me think there's probably a bunch of heavy metals and sediment in there. I'm gonna screen this oil out, see if there's anything big in there. 
I let that oil strain overnight, and I don't know how well you'll be able to see it in the camera, but there is just a ton of sediment and crud in there. Almost like this got full of uh, muddy or sandy water. Uh, really, really just not good. Probably should have dropped the oil pan uh, before, but I think we should definitely go ahead and take the time and drop the oil pan now before putting the oil back in it because really nasty stuff in the bottom of that oil. Whew. I cut the filter open too. Let's spread this out. See what. Yeah, I mean, I mean nothing huge. I'm seeing, but just a bunch of that rust and sand sediment that easily could clog up a filter. I'm glad we went and changed this. And on the bottom of the oil filter, <laughs> look at that. So sandy and dirty. That being seen, let's go ahead and pop this pin off. See what she looks like inside. You see how much oil is left in that pan? The drain bolt should always be on the way bottom of it. But here we go, moment of truth. Tilt that sideways. Oh yeah, there's just a ton of slug in there. So kind of mad at myself for not pulling this in the beginning since it was just so easy, but really didn't have a lot of confidence in this engine. And well, now I am feeling a little bit more confident. So we're gonna clean this all up and take the pick oil pickup tube off. That's probably just full of mud and crud in there. Oh yeah. And we'll also take a measurement of the crankshaft end play uh, because this center one is the thrust bearing and from when I was reading the line a few of you guys actually commented too but these Cadillac 500 engines are known for wiping out the thrust bearing because this engine was never designed to have forward pressure put on it the whole time like an airplane engine is designed for that this one's not and I guess you could probably replace this without if you take the main cap off and slide the other one around. I don't know, I'll have to research that, but right now it looks plenty tight, so we'll just take a spec on it. You guys probably can't see it too well, but I was also able to take a glance at the camshaft lobes in there, and they look pretty darn healthy from everything I can see as well. However, all this is gonna have to wait because I'm supposed to be getting the camper ready. We're doing a little uh, camping trip this weekend in the Clapper camper. You guys might remember that from previous video. Plug a link to it up top. Oh yeah, look at that, guys. <laughs> Hey, depending on how much use we get out of this engine, this is a true testament to the durability of the Cadillac 500 motor. Ah, oh, kind of sucks we ran this as long as we did. This is this is quite literally river mode. It feels like oh, this boat must have sank. It's the only reasonable explanation for all this in here. See what I'm saying about that drain bolt? It leaves so much oil on the bottom. So maybe here's something we either put like a male two inch or I've got one of these. Females cut off a tank. This, well, this one's off a tank, and this is off a 55 gallon drum. Maybe we'll fab one of those in there. Anyway, all that and more after the camping trip. Back from the camping trip. Let's make some headway on this, get it back together, maybe on the water today. Came out pretty good. I got a little porosity around it though. So I ended up hitting the inside too, just to be safe. However, I kept having fire shoot out. So I think this, this bung really wasn't a good choice because there's some kind of glue membrane inside of there that was boiling out, but should work. We'll see if it leaks. Anytime you have one of these steel oil pans off, you wanna go around all the holes and make sure none of them are kind of like ballooned out this way from an over tightened bolt with a cork gasket, it'll bend them. So a couple ways to, to fix that. You could use a block of wood or you know, even this piece of Trex, I could just stick right in here. Beat that down flush again. Just make sure all the holes are flush across, you know, them protruding. See how much crud we can get out of this oil pickup tube. It's kind of packed up in there. Wish this 
cover came off with these. I had a better idea, just swirl it around in the parts washer that I never use. It's got uh, mineral spirits in it. It's always covered in 10 boxes, so I never bother using it, but yeah, that'll flush it out good. Got that nice and cleaned up inside. Ready to throw her back together. That's the right size. Here's one last clip before the pan goes back on. You take a look at those flat tappets up there. See how they're, they're rusted on the bottom, but not in the bores. So luckily, those all are working smoothly. And all the cylinders look pretty much the same. Rusted on the bottom, pitted on the walls. So this, this will probably burn oil over time, but so far I haven't seen anything out of the pipe. Here's a look at the crankshaft end plate. I'm gonna call that maybe 5,000 or so. We'll measure it later though. We're not replacing that bearing now. Let's get the cover on. We got that all back together. Been setting up for a couple hours now. We went ahead and repitched the blade, added about a, another half notch on each one. He's got little one, two, three notches. So one's at three, the other's at three and a half. As we, we showed you before, we spun it around to, to measure it and make sure uh, you want to be within eighth inch on each blade. Uh, Alex went ahead and put the new lights on. So we got our nav lights up on the grill and then a highlight all around on the top there. Gonna add the ZDDP supplement. This is a zinc additive for flat tappet engines since new oils don't have as much zinc as they used to. And then top her off with my favorite oil, 15W40 Rotella heavy duty diesel engine oil. I use this in everything. The best. Uh, we're out here on test drive number two. Yeah, I'm feeling confident, very busy day. It's actually 4th of July, so a ton of boats out. This thing does not like wake. But let's mosey on across the channel. Let her roll, let her roll. Beautiful. Got decent oil pressure, light still on at idle. The charging has, has started working again. I told Alex it wasn't working, then I, I couldn't get it to not work again. So that's, I don't know what that was all about. Okay, we're running about 170 degrees, perfect. And RPM, you know, I got it dialed in, dialed in at 800 at idle, but this is really just not accurate enough. You see as I come up, it's just not, yeah, that's, so the motor meter racing so far, I'm gonna have to give it a, th a thumbs down because unless we got something wired up wrong, I'll check later. Uh, that tack is just kind of bouncing all over the place. You've actually gotta be careful about how hard you turn it is too, because if you throttle it up, that side just about dips in the water. So it's definitely for deep water, you need to be experienced with something like this, otherwise I see good chances of swapping it. So it's meant for shallow water, not 50 foot channels. She just shut off coming into the cove here. So we got the correct crap cruising by hooked up. We took a good little wake over the back, but uh, yeah, out of harm's way now, cruising into the, the T-Town Cove. It took one over the front like a little spray and then it just died out, wouldn't start back up. 
that was a good test for the when you die and don't throttle it out because yeah it was like psh, right over the back a good little splash of course we got no bilge pump so thought that one out yeah we got the tow boat here tow boat usa right i don't know i was gonna be towing you today <laughs> i think i found the problem why it shut off guys i forgot alex rewired the uh the switch here oh it holds it down okay that's different than what i'm used to but there you go all right well that was that's good that's great and we found two things out we stalled right as we were coming in and i was a little bit worried about when this boat stalls what happens with it because the water kind of just comes over the back but it was only a little wake and what is that your bail bucket yeah a cone has 12 ounce can about 200 scoops later we're all dry let's not take any more wakes over the back just a little little like hold slowly start hitting it no it's got yeah there you go death wish sitting up front with the other boats out of here and all the wake i mean i i pretty much saw my life flash before my eyes when i came into alex's wake and the nose dipped down i can see why airboats have a big high up uh bow on them because it's yeah it's no joke does not feel safe super sketchy but she made the trip so far let's see if we can dock this thing Oh yeah. For a little spin today. <laughs> you ever do something and then you're like, how did I miss that? <laughs> I think we can start wrapping up the Caddy Swamp Ass Part 3 video. A few things to mention. We got three hours runtime on the engine now, and it has not ate a drop of oil. Stays right up to the full mark, crystal clear. 
which is very surprising seeing how the, the, the walls had some cylinder rust on them and whatnot, uh, surface rust. This, I'm gonna just cut this and shorten it because it doesn't have a ton of tongue weight anyway, so that won't be a problem. I could have put it spare under there, but I plan on possibly redoing this at some point when we maybe paint the trailer. Uh, if there's gonna be a part four, you know, I'm all ears for suggestions, guys. If you got some good ideas, like maybe uh, bring it down to some, some other cool swamps. If you have good locations, you'd recommend bringing it that aren't too far from the Philadelphia, Pennsylvania area. Uh, definitely let me know. Or uh, heck, if you're a, a company that sells superchargers and you wanna send me a kit for this thing, I'd gladly bolt one on and see if she holds up. Did go ahead and put dual 1100 gallon bilge pumps, one in each corner. No through hole, cause I didn't want any more water getting in. It's, you know, it sits really low, so just dump the hoses out. Still have to wire those up, but uh, they work good. And trying to think of any other last minute things I could mention, uh, still lots of work to do. You know, we need to do more seats, cup holders, maybe a longer steer handle, possibly a deck over on it, but all that would be in a part four. So if, if you guys want to see more on this boat, or have again suggestions on where to bring it definitely let me know drop a comment down below hugely appreciate that and i also hugely appreciate you checking this video out if you did because i wouldn't be able to dump money in an old turd like this if you guys didn't want to watch it and now uh, by the way price wise in in the part one alex was kidding saying oh can't believe we got this for 4k we, we didn't we actually paid 900 dollars for it which i think was a fine deal considering this this baby runs like a top i've seen uh parts for these and just hulls selling for for that price also so Richard, if you're seeing this video, drop me a comment or email because I lost your phone number and you know, me and Alex promised you a ride on this on your private lake if, if and when we got it running. So it's running, hit me up, we'll take you out for sure. And now it's back to working on this junky wet bike. So thanks again for watching and we'll close out the video with some clips of the, uh, the little trip we did. camp spot set up, unload the rhino, and Jen's drinking Miller Lite. <laughs> Bush Light. That was just a leftover. Wood of Farmers. How is it? It's working there. It's cold, but let's get in. Oh. You want that? We'll give you a little bit. Oh, yeah. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. Going in for the belly rub. One of these hold and did a couple of four of these. Yeah, it's butchered Let's up. Let's see what this RM250 is all about. 2006. Come on, boy. It oh, it is nice. What do you think, Gus? You're next. These are some of the best UTVs ever made. Nimble, narrow, great for these tight trails.